All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello, everybody. If you're watching, you can see us on, on video. This is a, a new feature of this annual webinar, so I hope that's entertaining for you. Uh, I'm John Reed. I'm part of the Controlling Conference founding team, as is Alice Adams, who's also on webcam with a massive clock behind her, so she will never lose track of the time today. Thanks for joining us, Alice. She's, Alice is the queen of controlling, so she's going to tell you everything you need to know. And then we also have on the phone a disembodied voice. That that would be Mark Downs. He's uh, responsible for directing our sales operations, which means that he's the guy that answers all your questions about how to get to the show. And we've done these every year because we think it's helpful for you to kind of get a sense of, you know, there's a lot of conferences to choose from out there, and what we think is different about this one so you can see if it's a good fit for for you or your, your team. Um, if you're live in the webinar, we really want to emphasize your questions first and foremost. So I know in a lot of webinars, the deal is that you have to kind of wait till the end, which is often the format that we have. But in this webinar, I really want you to chime in early and often to make sure that your questions get answered quickly because you may have other things you want to do today. And you can always see the rest of this on replay later as well. So right, else. That's right. This is really for you guys, so don't be shy about weighing in with your questions. All right, so uh, I'm managing the slide deck, which is doomed for error, so Alice will be helping me with that part. But Alice, how do you want to kick this off just by sharing a little bit about the purpose behind the conference or what? Yeah, I, mean, I think that would be great. Um, I can share briefly about the conference and kind of give you an idea about why we started it six years ago, and then we can introduce our team and then go into some questions from there. Okay. So basically, um, this is our sixth year for the Controlling Conference. Um, John Jordan is the founder behind the conference, and the whole reason it started is that there was there's a lot of great SAP conferences out there, but there's nothing specific for controllers. Um, and those working specifically with the controlling and management accounting module. So that's really where the idea for the conference started. Um, I've worked on a lot of SAP events and I kind of had a similar opinion that there was really nothing specific specifically for this really niche group of people. Um, so this is the sixth year for the event. Um, if you haven't been before, it's kind of um, a small family-like event and we see a lot of people every year. We have a lot of opportunities to build community and to network and to learn a lot of great controlling information, which I know that we'll get into the details here in a few minutes. Um, but that's a little bit about the conference and how we got started. Yeah, I'll add a few things to that. One is that so far we've had the same location every year, which is sunny San Diego. Um, don't want to hear any complaints from anyone about that location because you know that you could be going to Vegas or Atlanta for the millionth time, but instead you get to go to San Diego, so that's pretty cool. And we usually have pretty neat tours uh, lined up that you can sign up for, walking tours and such. Right, Alice? They usually go over pretty well. They do go over pretty well. We usually have... Every, every now and then we have a dud, but they're almost always good. This year we're only have good tours. <laughs> only, only good ones this year, right. So, uh, so yeah, so start posting your questions in the chat about why you showed up today. But I do want to add a few things that I think make this conference different. Uh, first of all, we're, we're kind of a lean team of conference veterans. We've all been to a lot of SAP shows. Alice and other team members have worked on a lot of shows. And we feel like there's some things we can do to make the show better. Um, and a lot of that is to do with the fact that it's a more interactive interactive show. There's a lot more chance for you to have input on the structure and format of the event, especially in our post-conference day, which we will be discussing. The other things I really want to emphasize are we are independent from SAP. Uh, we do have good relationships with SAP around this conference. Uh, they have a they'll have a presence there with their lab, which Alice will explain a little more about. But uh, we, like, we like that independence because we think it gives customers a chance to be free to to share their real issues and concerns as opposed to, you know, feeling like they're in an environment where they're being sold to. Um, and, and of course, for controlling professionals, that's a really significant issue because you guys are kind of at the heart of SAP's push around uh, uh, S4 HANA, which is financials at its core, but also big moves around analytics and related machine learning stuff. And, you know, it's important for you guys to be able to ask serious questions about that. And 
we always have good people from SAP on site as well, but we like the fact that we can run it ourselves. And most of the attendees are also fellow customers. So while there are some value add consultants and some partners that we select really carefully as well, um, a lot of it is your peers and that that's a big part of our focus. Does that sound about right, Alice? It does, and that's actually a great point. Um, I ran the numbers recently on last year, and 95% of the attendees um, were working at customers. So as John said, a handful of consultants, um, several partners who are very involved in this space. Um, but this is really an event for users. And if you've been to other SAP shows, you know that that 95% number is very high. Uh, so uh, a lot of SAP shows you're going to find a really different mix with a lot more people selling services. So anyway, that's just the environment we're trying to create. So what's next? Alice, we do the team now? or? Yes. Um, and okay. while you flip to that slide, I just wanted to add um, the dates for this year, are September 18 through 21. As John mentioned, it's in San Diego at the Westin, um, which is a great venue. Um, if I can as well, actually, the first thing I'll address after we introduce our team is tell you a little bit more about the structure of the event. Um, it's maybe a little bit different than some other events that you've been to. So our team, this is us. Most of us are here. You cut your hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a really professional looking photograph of us in action too. It's pretty nice. Um, so, as John mentioned, um, Mark Downs is also on the phone, and Mark handles all of our sales. Um, John Jordan um, is also on the team. He is really the vision behind the conference. Um, Jacqueline Mello handles all of our on-site logistics. Um, I typically handle all of the content and marketing and project management. And John, I'll let you tell about what you do yourself. Well, that's a good question. We're still trying to figure that out, as John always jokes. Um, but uh, in seriousness, I, I usually MC a couple of panels, help out with the keynote, and just generally try to be around. I, I help to facilitate the post-conference day as well. So I'm basically around the whole time trying to make things work. He actually does a lot more than that. He also is heavily involved with our um, marketing as well and strategy. Okay then, nice. So, you're, you're hired. <laughs> so, so uh, what's next? Do we go to the next slide? Or? Sure, we can go to the next slide. Okay. So one thing I wanted to mention is the structure of the event. Um, there's four days of the conference, and attendees have the option to decide which days they'd like to attend based on their schedule and their interests. So September 18th is a pre-conference day. Um, based on some feedback we received during the last two years, we've actually tweaked that day a little bit. So we have two simultaneous um, in-depth sessions running that day. One who's, that's intended really for CO beginners, maybe those who are refreshing their skills, um, and then another track that's intended um, to go a bit more in-depth and is um, planned for those who have more experience. Um, we have those sessions listed on our website. So I, I encourage you to take a look at that and see what's a good fit for you. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, so the 19th and 20th, are sort of the more traditional conference days. So we have multiple sessions running. And we'll also have some partner sessions. And the SAP lab is planned for the 20th. Um, so you have multiple options to choose from those days. And then the 21st is the post-conference workshop. Um, and I, I know that John plans to talk a little bit more about that later, so I won't go into a lot of detail now. Right, and we we often do get this, we get questions around people trying to figure out if the conference is a fit for them, and I think one thing, Alice, you might want to touch on is just for the pre-conference, ideally for folks who, they're, if they're not sure if the material is a little too advanced for them on the other days, this is a chance for them to really get their feet wet early so they can hit the ground running. Exactly, and I would really recommend the day exactly for that, um, especially it kind of depends what perspective you're coming from, but if you're new to a CO team or maybe you've been working more in finance and you're switching over to controlling, whatever the case may be, it's a good opportunity just to start um, really from scratch and to review the functionality from a high level and get an understanding of how it all fits together. 
Yeah, why don't we talk a little bit about that fit thing, because we get questions about this a lot. Um, you know, I'll tell you my take on it is that I think this show is ideal for SAP controlling experts, people who are part of what you might call functional teams. Um, it's great for people who are moving up the CFO food chain a little bit. We're adding more content on that in that area, which we'll get into around this notion of bringing your boss to the conference. But I just want to ask Alice, and perhaps Mark will want to touch on this too, some of the most common sort of job titles and roles and, and, and questions we get around, like, is this right for me? So we get a lot of questions around this topic. I know that Mark can attest to that as well. So I'll, I'll kind of give you my perspective. Um, and, you know, if we don't, if you have more questions, you can always put them in the chat or reach out to us, and we'd be happy to go into more detail. But essentially, the conference goes into detail in the management accounting module of SAP and some of the integration with finance, for example. Um, we see a lot of business users, especially those that are dealing with master data, transactions, configuration, or reporting. Um, we have a handful of consultants who will attend. Um, by and large, the attendees often have the job titles analysts, accountants, controllers. Um, we've had several center of excellence managers attend in previous years. Um, we'll usually have a handful of finance directors, um, a lot of FI, CO team leads, um, as well as those handling production costing. Um, there's a lot of variation on any, on any of those titles, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of who we tend to expect to see. Yeah, Mark, what kind of questions do you get about that, and what are some of the common job titles that you see that are a fit? Well, kind of going off what Alice said, um, you know, the SAP uh, business users uh, that work in the FICO arena, um, controllers, accountants uh, that also are in the SAP, you know, uh, that side of uh, FICO. So similar, similar job titles, um, occasionally uh, CFOs, occasionally, um, you know, just the higher ups in the, in the business user a realm as well. <clears throat> okay. And I would also add that that if you consider yourself more of a QA person or more just a financials user and you're wondering if the conference is a fit, that's something you're probably going to want to follow up with with Mark and Alice directly on after after this event to get a little more details. Uh, my short version to you is that I think it can be, especially if you're aspiring to more hardcore controlling roles and want to start making those transitions, but you will want to check with us and just make sure on that front. Um, the other thing I would like to cover just briefly in terms of fit is one of the issues that we that we talk about every year with our attendees is, you know, striking the right balance with SAP content around the HANA piece, right? Because obviously S4 HANA is SAP's go forward solution and, you know, the financials piece of that is very important. Um, so we want to make sure that you're educated on that and, and you have the option to get as much information as you need, but then we also want to respect the fact that a lot of folks have day-to-day -day issues they're dealing with that have nothing to do with those new newer releases or technologies, and so that's the balance that we're always trying to really strike, and I think mostly we get it, but but that's something that we are trying to deal with every year. Alice, what are your thoughts on that now? Yeah, I mean, this is always a difficult balance to strike, and I feel like more or less, um, you know, we've got it right, but we did get some helpful feedback last year, um, which is kind of a simple solution, but basically about how we label the sessions. So in every single session description, you'll see very clearly noted, is this session relevant for ECC users, or does it have information about S4 HANA, or does it have some elements of both, which in a few cases, um, that is, that's true. Um, so we're trying to, I think a lot of this has to do with expectation. So you want to go to sessions that are relevant to you or things you want to learn about, and um, we've tried to make some adjustments to make that happen more smoothly. And if you do want to get more of a feeling for, for S4 HANA, uh, there will be a lot of opportunities to do that. Maybe we can briefly touch on the SAP Labs piece. Definitely. So um, we're very happy that SAP will be sponsoring the lab again this year. Um, that will take place on Wednesday, the 20th, and it'll be all day. Users can sign up um, for a 30-minute time slot. Um, we'll send out a lot more information about that in advance of the conference. 
but essentially you have the opportunity to sit down with someone from SAP and take um, a closer look at some of the various aspects of S4 HANA. Cool. And I know I'm probably ruining some of your slides, so I'm sorry about this. But uh, there's, there's one more thing that's on my mind, and I want to break one more time and just encourage folks listening. If you have a question, please type it in now. Uh, even simple questions are fine. Um, otherwise, we'll progress with some of the frequently answered questions that we get all the time. Um, the other one is sort of a keynote preview. Each year, we spend a lot of time thinking about keynotes. We like to hear the customer perspective, so you, you won't get celebrity keynotes at controlling 2017, sorry, you won't be hearing from uh, Kobe Bryant or Derek Dieter or Tiger Woods or Condoleezza Rice or so-and-so, but you will hear from a customer. What, what do we wind up this year? So the keynote this year is being presented by Jeff Klabish from Altavia, and he heads up their um, change management practice. So it's been kind of interesting to me after being involved with SAP for a number of years that change management I would say during the last two years of the conference, we've seen really emerge as something that people want to spend a lot of time talking about, even in our post-conference session. Um, so Jeff spoke for the first time last year at the conference, and this year we've invited him to present the keynote, um, and it's focused around how do you prepare for uncertainty. So it's higher level, and then he's doing some key tie-ins to the controlling community. What are the impacts um, that you can be aware of and you know what kind of career impact does that have for you as well as what are some of the organizational considerations oh and also our keynotes are mercifully short so uh, <laughs> it's the shortest keynote that I attend in the calendar years so that's that's pretty impressive but the the other thing is that the change issue I think is big right Alice because the last few years like that's been a big topic that people have brought up throughout the conference and also on the post-conference day, working with users, getting them on board with new systems, just managing the change that's invoked by these uh, software implementations is a big theme. It looks like we have a question. Oh, okay. What do we got? Um, something about blockchain and SAP, will this be covered? Uh, yeah, SAP and the blockchain. Well, you know, SAP's blockchain plans are are pretty, um, I would say, uh, baby steps at this point. I actually know a bit about blockchain because I've written about it and been to some blockchain events and such. Uh, it's not going to be like there won't be a session on, on blockchain at the conference, uh, but uh, if you do attend the conference and you want to talk about that, it's something that we could probably arrange for you to talk with other interested parties there because there's probably a few others that would like to discuss it. Um, and I'd be happy to like do a lunch with anyone who's interested and share what I've learned as well. But we're kind of still waiting to see how SAP productizes blockchain. It, it's included in its new Leonardo solution, um, but a lot of details in that haven't really been released. SAP put out a press release yesterday about this very topic that's so heavy with jargon that it's hard to understand what they're really doing. So, um, but by the fall, we should, we should know more. So, but I, I, I would say if you really want to get into blockchain, um, I would really recommend looking at a blockchain specific event at this point. Thanks for the question. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question actually too. A plus. Uh, so I guess we should probably see what's next on the slides. Let's do that. Let's see what, what we have next there. I don't know why it's not going automatically. Let me just go down one more. Key information. There we go. Frequently asked questions. Okay, so this is sort of, we've covered some of this stuff. Are there any that we've missed? So... Maybe I can just briefly revisit this first one, the, the amount of controlling background. We really, from my perspective, we have something for everyone, and especially the pre-conference day attempts to address that. Um, if I was, on average, we've actually polled people. I, I think the last year, the average number of years of experience was about nine years. Um, so it's, it's a relatively experienced group. Um, but there is content that's you know appropriate for everyone. What other questions would you like to address on here? 
So one easy question that we get a lot is, do you have to sign up for sessions in advance? You do not. Um, you can just show up to any session you like. You can switch around if you want to, um, but there's no need to sign up in advance. Um, last year, we actually had a really cool event app that we had for the first time, and that gave attendees opportunity to create their schedule in advance. And I'm hopeful um, that we'll have that again this year. Cool. What else? I'll answer one more, and then I'll give a couple to Mark to answer. Um, let's see, CPE credits. We do offer CPE credits. If you've ever earned them before, you know there's a lot of rules. We hand the rules out on site, but essentially we will have um, 20. Hold on one second. Let me look up the exact number. 22.5 CPE credits. Cool. So if you want to earn those, definitely attend the conference. Or if you don't, you should attend too. <laughs> and Mark, one question that I know comes up a lot for you is uh, the notion of team uh, discounts and opportunities to bring in teams. What kinds of questions do you get about that? Right, John. Uh, well, in regard to discounts uh, for group rates, we have a 5% 5 5 discount for groups of four to six. Uh, if you have seven plus members, we do a 10% discount. Also, the groups can, uh, we accept check or PO, so we can do an invoice for the group, uh, group rates as well. You don't have to uh, go through the website and use a credit card, so we can send an invoice for those groups as well. Also, I wanted to mention, uh, we do have a price increase that happens at the end of the month, so June is considered one of our early bird rate um, rates, so to speak. So if you could register uh, in the month of June, I believe all the rates will uh, jump up by $100 after the June 30th. So this is a good good month to register in regard to that. Um, currently, the rates uh, for the full event uh, are around 2000 uh, If you want to go to the conference only, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, that's a $1,500 rate. And then if you do the pre-conference and the conference or the conference and a post-conference day, that's currently running $1,750. Now, one thing I will mention, occasionally we do um, non-advertised discounts where we don't really have them posted anywhere on the website. But occasionally, uh, as we move forward to the conference date, we might have a promo running. So it uh, would benefit uh, you maybe to reach out to me to see if there's something currently running that, again, that maybe not be advertised on the website. So keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> yeah, one thing uh, that's a twist for this year is we, we've looked to beef up even more of our content that's relevant to uh, financial managers and, and to some extent CFOs as well, because we usually have a couple CFOs attending the conference. Um, that kind of fits in with our bring your boss to controlling concept. Uh, tell us about that, Else. Sure. So this is the first year that we've done this, and we're really looking forward to it. On September 19th, we've planned one session per track that's specifically targeted at CFOs, controllers, finance directors, and managers, um, or anyone who's aspiring to um, those roles in their career. Um, and the idea is that, you know, maybe an analyst comes to the conference and they bring their boss who's a CFO. Um, and that these sessions will really focus on um, strategy aspects and direction um, that will help them you know, be more effective. So um, in that track, we have some things on change management. We have some things on SAP direction and strategy. Um, we have a session on revenue recognition, which is a um, pretty hot topic at the moment. And I know that it will change a little bit by the time we get to September. Um, and then some things on you know, what's new with analytics um, as well. Um, so I definitely recommend that you check that out, and this is a good way to get teams involved. Um, by and large, when groups register, we have more people register in groups, um, teams from company, than as individuals, and it's a good opportunity to kind of divide and conquer um, and contribute to your strategy. Right, and you can, if you're aspiring to these roles in the future, you can attend these sessions with your boss, just don't tell your boss you're planning to replace them someday because that could be a little bit awkward. Um, but but I, 
I think it's nice to think about these sessions as not just for CFO types, but for those who want to advance along that progression as well, because that's a big question that I get a lot is I want to move a little bit beyond configuration and day-to-day -day implementation or day-to-day -day reporting type stuff. And so this is one way to kind of get a window into that while attending the same conference. That's sort of cool. I actually, and I think there's a lot of opportunities to do that even beyond this track. Um, for example, uh, Matthew Smith from 3C did a presentation, our webinar last week, and um, one of the things he was talking about is how how do you kind of go beyond your job and contribute beyond that? So what's the bigger picture? And that was just a little piece of what he was talking about, but I thought that was really interesting um, and something that can really be applied in a lot of ways throughout the conference. Right. Is he presenting at the show? He is. I believe he is. <laughs> yeah. And, and so he'll, he's will he got some great stuff on visualization, which ties into thinking about better uses of data. And that's all the kinds of advanced topics that I think people are thinking about right now. So you get, you get your chance to do that. Uh, can we talk about the post-conference? Shall I get into yeah. that a little bit? Please. Okay. So the post-conference session. Uh, I'm not calling this an unconference, but it was inspired by ideas along those lines. And what it, what it really is to me is it's this notion that you don't want anyone to hop on a plane uh, that didn't get the content they wanted out of the conference. And so should you choose to stay for the extra day, uh, you gather in your room with the fellow attendees who stay. And essentially, there's no uh, planned format when you walk in the room. So. Uh, the first small chunk of the day is what we spend basically going over uh, what people in the room want to learn before they leave the conference and and also what people might have to offer from their uh, customer experiences. Maybe they have something that they've done that they didn't get a chance to present on. So we kind of brainstorm around all that stuff and then through that, uh, Alice and I together, we help you guys form an agenda for basically kind of a half day of sessions, usually it's two or three sessions, um, and, you, and you have some choices also between them to break out into small groups if you want. And in, in my mind, this is a really exciting way to make sure that you get the content you needed before you leave the show. And overall, it's I think it's been a really big success. It's a little bit different for certain people because they've never really attended a day without a schedule before. But But we hammer out the schedule, I think, usually pretty effectively, and then from there, uh, it's a really fun day to, to be a part of. Definitely. And what's interesting is that every year has actually been pretty different um, in terms of content. So I know one year we were pretty heavily focused on material ledger, and then I think last year was definitely more focused like a lot around planning and BPC. Um, but we really do our best to make sure that everyone is having sort of their needs met and their questions addressed. Um, and even the format has looked a little bit different from year to year. I know one year we had John Deere presenting. They pulled up their system. They showed us a little bit about what they were doing. Um, and then some other years it's been a little bit more like a roundtable where there's a lot of Q&A and discussion in small groups. Yeah, and I think there was one year where there were a lot more questions for SAP that hadn't been answered. And so there was a little more focus on that for part of the day. So it's we really it's really our chance to sort of address things that that just didn't quite get addressed in the in the sessions on the first two days because you know and and to be clear we do try to make course corrections on the first two days as well uh, you know so for example when I said you know we could do a blockchain lunch or something you could certainly create a spontaneous activity but but since the sessions and program guide and it gets hammered out in advance this this last post conference day is really our chance to make sure you guys get to get with each other. And a lot of times there's folks in the in at the conference that, that know way more than, than anyone else. And so it's a great chance to learn from each other. And and essentially we just try to set up a structure for you to do that. Definitely. So that's the post con day. So let me come up for air one more time here and just invite the attendees who are still hanging out. We still have a number on the call. Uh, this will probably be the last real good chance to to chime in with with your questions that we haven't answered yet. We are going to get a hit on a few more things, but don't hesitate to type in. Else, what, what do you want to cover next? So a couple of things. One really basic item is that all of the sessions for the conference as well as the speakers are all on the website. Um, that's not to say that there may be a few adjustments as we get a little closer, and I'm aware of a couple that are in the works. 
Um, but 95% of the program is complete. You can check it out. You can read it. If you think something's missing, please send me an email. I'd love to know that. Um, but it's all there for you to go ahead and evaluate and take a look at. Um, one question that comes up a lot is getting approval to attend conferences. So I know this is not easy, budgets are tight. Um, one thing that we've done is on if you go to the erpcorp.com um, blog um, or to the conference homepage, there's a link. Um, you can click on that. But we've put together our thoughts on how to get approval. Um, as well as a template that you can use as a letter, something that you can tailor according to your own organization. So if you have any trouble with getting approval, I definitely recommend that you check out that link, not just for our conference, but for every conference. Cool. I would also add that, that if you're um, either on the call today or if you're watching the replay of this and you're, you're not from the U.S. and you're wondering how that would go for you, uh, we always get a decent amount of far-flung uh, visitors from everywhere from EMEA to often even the Middle East and uh, we've had some from South America as well so if you if you're you know cause the thing is that there's not that many conferences that are hardcore controlling so if you're thinking of traveling a long way to come to the show we definitely would encourage that and welcome you to do that and I think you'll find a friendly and welcoming environment don't know if you guys have any more comments on that but we always have a pretty diverse group I think we do have a diverse group, and I've written um, a fair number of visa letters after someone has registered, so if you need one of those, then send me a note. Um, actually, one other FAQ that we haven't addressed is a lot of people ask, well, how many people are going to be there? Um, and it's a little bit of a guesstimate at this point in the game. Um, we still have, you know, a few months to go before the conference, um, but we're expecting about 175 um, paid attendees and speakers, and then about 30 partners. So um, right around 200, a little above, um, should be on target for 2017. Yeah, and I would also add that we haven't touched on this a lot, but but our partners, I think you're really going to enjoy interacting with them if you come to the show. I know a lot of times. Uh, when you go to a show, it, it's like the vendor booth area. It's almost like you dread it unless you want to get like a stuffed animal for your kid or something because you know you're going to get hit with all these sales pitches and stuff and it might not really even make, make sense for you. But the partners that we select for the show are partners that we think are really making a difference uh, in the SAP ecosystem for controlling and finance people and, and for companies. And so... Uh, you know, you might not choose to, you know, to procure their services, but I think educating yourself about what they have to offer, I think, is is another key takeaway from the conference. You know, Alice, if you have any thoughts on that, but I completely agree. We actually spend a lot of time on this and really try to make sure that every all of the vendors who are there are relevant. Um, and a number of them have been there for several years. Um, we have partnerships with them. Um, they care about this community too, um, and. Yeah, I think you'll find it to be worthwhile. So we're almost at the end of our small slide deck. Uh, I, I know on this this particular one, we haven't talked that much about getting the most out of the conference. You know, you could probably do a separate webinar for people who are planning to attend on, on that topic alone, just because I think that getting the most out of an event is sort of an art form. Um, if you just show up the day of the event without having put some planning into it, you definitely won't get the most out of it, but was there anything else that you wanted to cover on that today? I can just say a couple of things. I mean, I think putting, you're making a decision to go, um, and there's effort that goes into that, and I think effort should go into making sure that the conference goes well as well and that you're getting what you want out of it. Um, so I, you know, some of these things are obvious, but I'll say them anyway. I'm going to review the program, make a list of speakers and sessions um, that you'd like to see, make a list of exhibitors and sponsors that you might like to speak with, um, talk to your manager and your team and see what's on their radar, what's important to them, um, bring lots of business cards, sometimes people forget. Um, and then there's also ways that you can reach out in advance. So if we have the event app again, that's a great opportunity to start connecting before the conference even starts and to see who's going to be there and who you want to connect with. Um, I also recommend keeping a kind of running list of takeaways or action items based on the conference. Um, and probably the most important thing you can do is pay forward whatever you learn. 
So when you get back to the office, um, schedule a lunch and learn or some sort of workshop. Um, it's a good opportunity to share what you've learned. Yeah, and one thing that I've I've learned from going to the shows that I go to is that sometimes you just don't make enough connections. Um, I, I think I think shows are are even more about connections than they are about content these days. And so, okay. Sorry, that was me. Um, that's all right. So <laughs> I have construction going on outside my house, but fortunately they have stopped during this webinar. I don't know why. Uh, but anyhow, um, like I think, like for example, like. We have a turbo networking event that we've included in the conference that what what it does is it gives you a really quick opportunity to exchange business cards with people around certain topics that you care about, such as your industry focus, for example, um, or or where you're located geographically. Different what we're trying to do a little bit there is stir the pot a little bit and and make sure you get a lot more contacts, even if you don't have time to talk with all of them directly and and the lunch lunches is also an opportunity to do that and so you know it's it's a pretty good conference for for mingling people are pretty friendly when we first did this show I wasn't really sure if we could how controlling people would mix with each other um, but it turns out they mix really well and get along well and so I think you'll find yourself pretty comfortable like meeting people and um, but but we're always there to hanging out to make sure you make the connects that you need and that's the big part of it is that I think a lot of people just just when they go to conferences, they, they're more like, well, my company wants me to go, whereas it's got to be more like you have to seize the day and be like, how do I get the most out of this for myself and, and, and also for my team? And if you approach it that way, you should be good. If I can just add on to that, I think that's one of the coolest things about this event is that it's really a community-oriented event. And because it's such a niche group and a, um, you know, a sort of small group in the scale of SAP conferences, you really have an opportunity to, um, you know, get to know people, find out what they're doing, um, and I think that that's something unique in comparison to a lot of events that I've been to. Um, and I also think, I mean, not to toot our own horn, but I think we do a good job about course correcting during the conference. So um, typically on the second day, we'll ask you, is there something that is there a question you have that hasn't been answered? And we'll connect people up right in the room. Um, and we do that throughout the conference, and it's kind of up to you to tell us, you know, are you getting what you need, or do we need to make an adjustment? Um, and we're more than happy to do that. Yeah, it, it's kind of a neat format. It puts a little more responsibility on attendees to speak up, but the good news is that if you do that, um, you know, we can usually make something happen, because usually there's someone at the show that can answer your question in almost all, all the cases that I've seen anyway. So we're, we're at our question slide. Is this the last slide or is second to last? I think it's close. That's probably. Yeah, this is just about it. We do have so, our So go ahead, Alice. I was just going to say um, Mark and I both have our contact information here. Um, if, if you have a really sort of in-depth content question, you can feel free to send me a note. Otherwise, Mark is usually the right person. Or if you just email Mark, then he'll send you my way as necessary. Um, but we're both here to help you and to answer your questions, and um, yeah, feel free to reach out. Well, and I would also add that that while there, our conference is kind of our main annual focus, uh, we do also have educational events throughout the years, webinars like these. Many of them are much more focused on on controlling topics. Obviously, this one wasn't, but the rest of them are. And and we don't we don't do a lot of conference sales pitching during those webinars. Those are really educational webinars, so. If you can't go to the show for some reason or just want to learn more, then you should definitely get on our mailing list for those. I can actually mention what we have coming up. We have an S4 HANA Finance webinar later this month with Janet Salmon and Birgit Ertinger. And then at the end of July, I'll be announcing one next week that is about um, myths versus uh, reality when it comes to material ledger and S4 HANA. Cool. Mark, any uh, final comments from you that you want to make sure people hear? Again, uh, I can definitely help you with uh, group um, group rates, and it would be great to have your team attend the Controlling 2017. So I look forward to working with you. Great. Well, hopefully we answered a lot of the questions from the folks in the webinar today, and if you missed any of this, you'll be able to catch catch it again later. Alice, any final I'll let you close it out for us. 
No, that's all. Um, we're on social media. We have our website. Send us a note. Um, we hope to see you all in San Diego in September. Happy Okay, wait, <laughs> wait for the cams. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you guys later.